Hello and welcome to your first assignment, assignment one. It's quite exciting and learn to use some code to predict like the motion of a projectile. So hopefully you've had a read and a try at this assignment already. If not, um, pause this video and go give it a try. So I'm going to just start at the very beginning here. What's this assignment about? Imagine you're standing at the top of a hill and you're going to throw maybe a small rock or something. You've got a, you're going to throw it at a certain angle. And you know what angle you're going to throw it. That's theta. You're like uh, preparing to throw it at that angle. And you're going to throw it at its initial velocity, v0. You can control those things maybe. I don't know. And your hill has a certain height, y0. And uh, this projector will travel a certain distance in the x, a certain horizontal distance called d, until it hits the floor. Okay, The floor is when y equals 0. Okay, You hit the floor when you're the y equals zero. So we're going to use x and y to track the, the position of this trajectory. So different values of x and y will be different points of this trajectory. But this is about coding. It isn't about physics. We're not going to evaluate you on the physics too much. We're just going to get you to use code. So now I'm going to zoom in a bit so the font appears massive. Yeah. So it works on your phone. OK. So let's read together. The trajectory of the object can be described by this formula. So this gives you, if you know what was the initial velocity, v0, of your projectile, you know what angle you threw it at, theta, and you know the initial height of the hill, then as you give for different values of x, if you if substitute all that into this right-hand side here, the left side will give you what height the rock was at different times. Okay? We can actually use this formula directly to calculate d, the horizontal distance it travels. You just need to set y equals zero and solve. But we don't need to worry about that. Again, this is coding. Okay, so let's just get started with the first tasks. I'm going to write a script to calculate the following three trajectories. Okay, so we're giving different angles that we're going to throw the, the rock, different initial velocities. Actually, the initial velocities are all the same, and so is the height of this very, very small hill, because it's 3.5 meters. Okay. So here's the first task. Um, we need to calculate the distance d for the first trajectory, so trajectory number one. We need to substitute these values into the right-hand side of equation two. That's equation two. So we need to substitute them in the right-hand side in MATLAB. We're going to assign the results to the variable d1. So note, I'm always going to make it bold the variable that you have to give a numerical answer for. That's how you're going to be evaluated on the assignments and on the coursework. Always the bold one. And then a tip, make sure to use the right units. MATLAB has a function that you can call to calculate cosine and sine. But the these ones here for MATLAB expect that theta is in radians. There does exist an alternative for uh, degrees. It will be cosine with a d the name of the function and sign the D. Go to help uh, to find out documentation. So actually, this is a good point to go to help. Let's do that. How do we find help? I think there's a link somewhere here. Easy. Maybe it's down. Here we go. MATLAB documentation. So if you click on that, we should be able to go to MATLAB documentation. I need to remove my full screen. And this has opened up this here. This is a great place to look for help, okay? And I'm going to zoom in again. So let's say I write cosine. Ah, some suggestions. Excellent. So first is cosine in radians. Don't know what that is. Symbolic cosine. Who cares? Cosine of argument in degree. So this is a great place to find out. So let's see if I want to know how to calculate the cosine where x is in degrees or theta. This is the function I call cos d. So this is a great place to go to get help for the first instance. It will take you a while to get used to using this help and this documentation, OK? But just keep working, keep going back to it, and it will become very natural at some point. Back to the assignment. OK, so um, I wrote some nonsense here because I was just testing the recording. Right, let's go back to the actual assignment. So when you start the assignment, here we go. So we need to calculate the variable d1. OK, we're for, we calculate d given these initial values here. All right, how do we do that? Let's look back up. 
We've got a formula for d, which seems a bit long, doesn't it? We've got to some. We've got to copy this formula down into MATLAB, basically. So um, here goes. The first suggestion is that we break this up into three parts. Okay. So if you look at the formula on a separate screen, when you're actually writing the code, let's un. Let's gonna. We're not gonna uncomment this yet, but what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna write this into a sort of nice, elegant way. What we're going to do is we're going to break up that complicated formula into three parts. So, um, yeah. So if you had a separate screen, you'd be able to see that the formula for P1 has got the initial velocity V0 times the cosine of theta1. Okay, we are already run into trouble because we are now assigning d1 some values, v0 and cosine theta1, but we haven't given those values. So let's give those values first. What was the initial velocity for the first trajectory? If you look back, it was 25 meters. What was the initial angle for the first trajectory? It was 30 degrees, but we're going to use cosine and sine for radians. So I'm going to convert this to radians. You can do that by multiplying it by pi and dividing it by 180. I'm putting the semicolon at the end so that these values don't get printed when I run the code. You're also going to need the initial, the height of the hill, y0, which was given as 3.5 meters. If you want, you can write in comments here, for example, meters, meters per second, or perhaps the more short form, m. That will also help if I need to read your code to understand that you, you knew all the units. Okay, so now that you've done that, if you go back, if you can open the formula, if you can look at the open two browsers and look at the formula for D at the same time you're writing code, you'll see that the answer, uh, you can see that it can translate it like this. So V0 times cosine of theta 1 divided by G. So actually, before we go any further, let's run this and show you what the output is. So if I uncomment, if I remove the semicolon, when I run the code, it's going to tell me that I, the values of these variables. Okay, let's do that. That's a good starting point. Run script. Ba -ba -ba -da, your first ever run. Computer doing complicated things. Boom. It's run the script. It says V0 is 25, theta 1 is this. You can check with your calculator if you want that this is correct value in radians. And then it says unrecognized function or variable g. You have an error on line 7. Oh my god, the first time you've run code, you've already got an error. That's completely natural though. So unrecognized function or variable g line 7. Let's go look at that. Let's go to line 7. Here it is. And it says it doesn't know what g is. It's not a function of MATLAB and it doesn't have a numerical value yet. So that's because we have to give one. Let's give a numerical value. So make sure to always read your errors. I think the assignment said exactly that g should be 9.81. Make sure to, to give it this exact value, OK? Said that, hopefully. Yes, I guess it just says this here. Assuming g 9.81. Is there anywhere else that says that? No, I'm going to have to add that then in. Oh, yes, yes, g has to equal 9.81 exactly. OK, let's go back. Going back, going back, going back. Now, I'm going to run it again and see if it fixed the error. And I'm going to add these semicolons here. And you'll see that these variables no longer print. You don't want to print when you run the code. You don't want it to print the values of everything. It's a bit annoying in the output. So we're running again. Great. D1 has a value. And data is something that comes later in the code, which I haven't uncommented. This will come ready in your code in how to load your data. So I'm going to put a semicolon here so it doesn't print out, print this. So let's keep going, going fine so far. So again, you should have open on a separate monitor, a separate browser, the formula so you can look at it at the same time you code. Okay, so I'm going to keep, I can, can see the formula in a different browser. So if you look at it, it was going to be um, v0 cosine theta over g, then it's going to be times v0. It's a bit long this formula, isn't it? Theta 1 
plus the square root. How do you know the square root in MATLAB is written like this? Go to the MATLAB documentation. I think there's a tip in this assignment, but you can go to documentation, write square root, and it will tell you, oh, to use square root in MATLAB, you have to call this function. So anything between, and a, and a, maybe it be extra clear here, sometimes when you write a name of something and you open these parentheses, it knows that this is a function and you're passing a value to this function. It's going to do something complicated with this value and spit out another value in this place here. But sometimes when you write parentheses, it knows that you're just wanting to use like the traditional mathematics parenthesis. I do these operations inside the parenthesis first. It knows that by seeing what's on the left. So here's a multiply sign or a space. It knows that then this is just the traditional parenthesis. But if it's got a name or something kind of stuck to it, then it knows that it's probably a function. Okay, so going back to that formula, what's in here, I believe, is v0 uh, squared times sine of theta 1. Um, and we need to elevate this to the power of 2. That's how you do the power of 2 to square something. So this will square this thing. And this v0 will also be squared. Plus 2. Now, this is not the best way to do this, but I want to show you the, the non-best way first. Now, I need to close the parenthesis that I opened over here. If you, if you highlight this parenthesis here, if you click it, you see? You see that an underline appears in the other one? That's showing you which parenthesis closes this opening here. Okay, so now I'm going to run the code again. Gives me a value. Is it right? Who knows? We should test. Okay, there are ways to test it, and one of them will be a plot. But now, I want you to look at how long this formula is. How easy is it to make a mistake with a parenthesis there? Very easy. So, let's break this encoding. You're going to learn to break things up into simpler steps to make it easier for you. So the way we break up a formula is we just rename certain parts of that formula. So I'm going to rename this one P1. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to give P1 the value that we, we think it should be. So P1's there. I'm going to rename maybe this second bit P2. Again, I'm adding semicolon so it doesn't print out. And then this bit in the square root, that's a bit long too. I'm going to call that P3. This now makes it easier for you to look at the formula and just check that you've got each of the terms right. It makes it visually easier to see how you've combined them all, that the, there's no mistake where you put parenthesis and everything. So that's a really good tip. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test if we've got the right answer for D1. I think because this is a pretest. So below your run code, you have pretests. What it's going to do is it's going to check if the first questions usually are correct and it will tell you straight away. Do not press submit. Do not press submit until you are completely certain you've finished the whole assignment and the same applies when you do the coursework which will give you grade. So, but run pretest, you can press this button as many times as you like. I'm going to press it once now. But like, you just press it as many times as you like and you need to press the pretest button immediately before you do the submit. Yeah, D1's correct. Have a look. Obviously, you're not going to get it correct the first time you write it. I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm used to it. I've got, I'm copying some formulas down. It's fine. So I've got that correct. We've not got the next ones correct because we haven't even tried doing them. So that's not a problem that they're not correct. Okay, so uh, now, if you've managed to follow this far, write it down yourself, copy this code in, and see if you can get this right, and then we'll return. To, and then you can go to the next video.